Greetings in the name of Christ and welcome to the St. Philip Presbyterian Church Tuesday devotional. My name is Reverend Melissa Connor and I'm one of the pastors at St. Philip. This is Holy Week, a week in which we walk with Jesus in his last of days. A week of hearing about plots and intrigue, sadness and torment, death and destruction. There are still times in the story, however, of comfort and friendship. The passage I read today has a little bit of all of that. It is important, especially in these times of uncertainty and stress, that we remember that even as we walk with Jesus in the difficult times, we are assured that Easter morning will come. For the next few days, we will be exploring Jesus' final moments before death and resurrection. You are invited to embrace that reflection and know also that there is hope. May we live in the tension of the sadness of the story and the knowledge that there is great joy and relief to come. For this part of the story, there are some questions by a working preacher that will be listed in the comment section. Please take some time to reflect and discuss, call up a friend and talk about these questions. Let us pray. Holy God, fill us with your spirit that we may hear your word and know your will. May we listen for your message. Guide us, O God. Amen. The passage that I'm going to speak about today is Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 30. There's more on our schedule today to read, but these are the verses that I'd like to focus on. So I invite you to hear these words, to listen to this devotional, and then to continue with the reading on your own. Please listen as I read the word. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became gravely distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl along with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to have not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely, not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are lots of things to note about this story. The disciples gather to remember the Israelites' redemption from slavery. A hard story of death and fear that ends in hope for the Israelites. In this holy Passover time, the disciples gather. They break bread with one another. Now, there's something very special about having a meal together. There's just something about sharing a meal that brings us together. I know that this is something a lot of us are missing right now. It's a good time and a good reminder of the little things that we find so meaningful. Jesus and the disciples ate together a lot. And in fact, Jesus breaks all sorts of expectations when he gathers with people to eat. He feeds the crowd instead of turning them away. He is happy to have women join him at the table to listen to his teachings. He eats with tax collectors. And here he eats with the one he knows will betray him. He lets Judas know that he knows. And yet he breaks the bread and shares it anyway. There is something very holy about the fact that Jesus gave his body knowingly to the one who betrayed him. 
for all of us, this can be a comforting message. We also don't come to the table perfect. Still, we can be assured that Jesus knows us fully and invites us still to the table. In these times of uncertainty, of course, we strive to love one another, to do our best, to be good, but Jesus assures us that no matter what, we are welcome at the table. And for that, I say, thanks be to God. And let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this holy week. We give you thanks for your table. We give you thanks that we are enough and that you invite us all to join in the meal that you have provided. God, we are grateful for the comfort and the challenge that you provide us when you love us fully. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. And may you know that even when we are separated by distance, Christ is with us. Christ connects us together. Christ welcomes us to the table. Thanks be to God.